Hello, my name is Vivian Lee, and I'm a master's candidate at the University of Guelph in Ontario, Canada. Today I'll be talking to you about an aspect of a multi-center project, um, one aspect specifically the survival of Listeria monocytogenes on pistachios, uh, cornflakes, and chocolate liquor stored at 4 and 23 degrees Celsius. So low moisture foods are defined as those foods having a water activity below 0.85. And while bacterial growth is inhibited in these conditions, the survival of pathogens like Listeria monocytogenes has been demonstrated on these foods for up to a year. So the existing body of research looking at the microbial safety of low moisture foods is mostly concerned with powdered infant formulas and raw nuts and nut butters. And so there's um, very little studies looking at low moisture foods such as confectionaries as well as dry cereals. So my research looks at assessing the survival of Listeria monocytogenes, specifically on inoculated dry roasted shelled pistachios, cornflakes, and chocolate liquor, stored at two very common storage temperatures, refrigeration, or four degrees Celsius, and room temperature, what we've defined as 23 degrees Celsius for our study. So we start by preparing our inoculum, and this is a four-strain cocktail of Listeria monocytogenes at eight log CFU per gram. After that, we inoculate our foods. And so this is through a wet inoculation, which is in the case of the pistachios, or uh, through misting, which was for the chocolate liquor and the cornflakes in order to maintain the structural integrity. Since this is a wet inoculation, uh, the foods do have to be dried afterwards at a low heat. So that's 30 degrees Celsius, followed by storage at 23 degrees Celsius, 30 to 35% relative humidity, and four degrees Celsius at 29 to 75% relative humidity. Samples are taken at week zero, week one, week two, week four, and then monthly. So we see in figure one, the survival of L monocytogenes on cornflakes in A, dry roasted pistachios in B, and chocolate liqueur in C. And we can see the difference in survival for storage at 23 degrees Celsius in black, and then four degrees Celsius in blue. And we see that there is a significant decline in populations for all three foods with storage at 23 degrees Celsius. Whereas with storage at four degrees Celsius, we're seeing the populations be quite consistent. We're also very interested in seeing whether there is a serovar specific difference in a presumed uh, desiccation tolerance for Listeria monocytogenes. So we're going to be doing this through using a multiplex PCR. So we're extracting the DNA from single colonies and we're doing this using an instagene matrix, which we've determined to be the most effective as well as the most efficient method of extraction for our purposes, followed by a multiplex PCR, which allows for the differentiation between four serotypes, which make up our four-strain cocktail. So we can see here in figure three that the multiplex PCR is able to differentiate between four serovars of Listeria, half A, half B, 3A, and 4B as you can tell from the distinct PCR profiles there. So concluding, we see that there is an effect of temperature on the survival of listeria on our foods, and we have greater rates of decline with storage at 23 degrees Celsius. It does appear that the rates of decline are much faster in the cornflakes, which are in A, as well as uh, on the chocolate liqueur, which is here in C. Uh, also, we have determined that our multiplex method is able to differentiate between those four serotypes that are in our cocktail. And future work will be done uh, looking at the relative quantities of these serovars at the very beginning of storage versus, let's say, six months versus maybe up to a year.